Okay, as promised, I'm going to show you what I am planning to do with my placemats. So planning being the operative word, both literally and figuratively. So what I've done, I've already made one because I wanted to make sure it actually worked. Um, I don't know if any of you remember the traveler's notebooks that I made, all of them. They need to go into some kind of cover together somehow. Leather can be quite expensive. The Midori uh, Traveler's Notebook covers can be quite expensive too. I wanted a simple, effective kind of solution where I could, you know, play with it a bit. So what I've done is I've turned the placemats into a traveler's notebook cover. So a faux Midori kind of cover. I even put a pocket on the inside and a smaller one on the back. And this is my placemat. I'm really happy how it turned out actually. And you can find this is the one with the plastic on the outside and sort of like a foam on the inside. You could find the all vinyl ones too, I guess. But these are the ones that I like because the Dollar Tree had them and I like the orchids and the blue flowers on this one too. There's so many different ones out there. You can potentially go to town and find all different kinds. Pretty much anything that suits your taste or your color combination, you could just do plain. I think they have them in, you know, as an assortment of colors and variations thereof. So that is what I was planning on doing with my placemats. I want to show how easy it is. I'm going to scoot you down. Hopefully we'll keep track of time. And uh, we can see what's going on. And I'm going to move my coffee out of the way because I do not want to spill it. So I'm going to make some room. Alrighty, so I already made one with the, the pink orchid. I really like how it turned out. I did try to glue the pockets on the insides. Because it's foam, it didn't really lend itself to gluing it too easily. Hence the extra um, eyelets that I put in. That worked just as well. I, I think it gives me more options to, you know, you can tie ribbon on it. You can put elastic through it for your pen. You can do another elastic this way so you can tuck things in there. I don't know. There's a, a myriad of things that you can do with it. So I have my cutting, my self-healing cutting board. And this one, it's got the blue. It doesn't really matter particularly what kind of cover you have or what the inside is going to look like because it's going to be covered for all intents and purposes. But all I did was I would measure it this way. I did not do a whole lot of other measurements because I found it was easier to not have it um, crease in the center. So I just did sort of a soft fold so it had more of a, a softer look to it. Because it's a placemat and it's quite flexible, it'll be fine to do it that way. So I don't want too much overhanging, but I don't want too little. So all I've done is just basically, you know, just a soft kind of feel to it. And you want to make sure it's straight, obviously. And all I did was take a pencil and just my pencil line on there. Now I have these um, Fisker's rotary cutters they're for fabric but they'll work quite nicely for this and I just use a metal ruler with the cork backing so it doesn't slip on you and you don't cut your hand because that would not be nice. Just follow along. So depending on how you want your picture to show up, you know, I want obviously most of this to show up. And then I'm just going to cut the top up, Ooh, excuse me, the top part. It's 
So all I did was sort of close to the edge and then I just did a pencil line this way. And then I just line it up and I just cut all the way across. So you want to use your grid so that you can line everything up properly. So this is straight because this is my non-cut edge. And this would be straight too. And then if you want, you can line it up on the thing itself. Now measurements aside, I could just, you know, use scissors if I really wanted to cut all the way across, but get them in. So everything is pretty much contained in there. It's pretty good. I like how that is. All I'm going to do is cut my corners. So what I've done is I've just taken my, just lined it up. I don't think a punch would work for this because it is foam. So I'm just going to cut it with my scissors. I'm just using the place that as the template itself. You could hold it against there and then cut around it. That would probably work too. But in this case, this is how we're doing it. So basically, you know, we have a teeny tiny placemat instead of a one big large one, which is okay. In this case, it'll be perfect for our cover. Now at this point you can figure out, you can use the smaller one for um, your inside pocket, which I have done before, so let me make sure that I actually do it the right way. And then that is going to create my, and you can use scissors for this because it's just basic. I'm going to cut it a little bit smaller. The last time I made it the same size and it was a bit too unwieldy to work with. So I'm going to cut it a little bit smaller around my edge again. Again, I could cut around the placemat itself because then the corners would line up nicely. But, you know, this piece you don't need to worry about. You could make a small version of this. You know, if you really wanted to, you could make another one without an inside pocket if you really wanted to. So and all I did was I would trace around part of this to make my opening for my pocket. Again, I don't know if a punch would work for this because it is plastic and it is um, foam. It might work. I don't know. But that's one pocket. And then we could do the other pocket here probably end up tracing part of this. I don't know, I just, uh, you can do it any which way you want. If you want to do it, you know, just an angle off, you can do it that way, whatever you feel like. I just like the ability to be able to slip th something in and out of there fairly simply. And again, we're gonna round our corners, the one corner anyway. But that is your basic kind of idea. You can trim that up later if you want to, if you're not really happy with how it looks on the edges, that's okay. 
but that's basically how I would put together. So we're going to set these aside for now. We're going to find our um, center to put our elastic in. So we'll probably end up using white for this one. I could use gray. I don't know. You can choose whatever color you like, I suppose. But we're just going to find our center. Like I said, I'm not doing a fold. I'm doing it from straight edge to straight edge. And I'm not really counting the corner where I've trimmed it. So that's 11 and three quarters. So five and a half and a bit. So roughly there. As long as you're even with that, you should be good to go. And then I just take my bunch. Oop, it goes everywhere. I love this thing. It works really well. And then I just put my center one in first because it'll be easier to figure out where the other two are going to go. I don't have to crop it out. This is basically a smaller version of of that. It just crimps it on both sides, or on the other side, regardless. But And then you can figure out where your next, I just do the next ones right beside where I have the space. Everywhere. And then you just do the same thing. Just line them up and put them in place. I like this one because I don't have to push too hard, or otherwise, my hand would be sore as anything. I'd like to make a small version of this out of leather. Let's see how that goes. And then all we're going to do is we are going to find our center point here. And we're going to find sort of the center of this. So seven and a quarter. I like to off center it a little bit. So it doesn't really have to be center center but that's going to be our other one now this one because i don't have the long reach you know the crocodile or whatever i just punch it with my manual one i'm going to do it both ways because otherwise the Sorry for the noise. The eyelid won't go all the way through. I might need to do that again. There we go. I'm going to set it. Just don't want any rough edges because otherwise your elastic will uh, get shredded by it. So that's basically, you know, the holes in place. So for the pockets, what we are going to do, what I did before was I glued it, but in this case, I'm not going to glue it. All I'm going to do, like you can if you want to, I don't know if it's necessary, but we are going to Nope, not this one. Hold on. This is why I go through so many binder clips. Because I don't know from one time to the next how many I'm going to be using. Oops, there we 
is my other piece. Pick that up. Oh my goodness. Uh, couple more clips. It's just to make sure it doesn't move on you when you try to put your holes in there. And you can move these binder clips around. That is the beauty of it. So all I'm going to do is the same thing as before. Safety first, let's get that out of the way. Make a little bit of space. So you sort of want to line things up. I did do one in the center here before. Yeah. And you can go in a bit. Yeah, it does make a mess, but that's okay. And then you, all you're doing is just attaching all your pieces together. But you get the idea. And if you really wanted to, you can make this more of a decorative edge and you can go all the way around, depending how many eyelets you have, I suppose. You know, you can just go to town kind of thing. If you so choose. But it gives you a few more options on how you want to lay out your, um, your cover, how you want pockets and things like that. Again, it's not going to be 100% um, lined up because things will shift. You could cut it smaller to begin with, or you can um, trim it afterwards. It's not going to matter overly much. You can just take some scissors to it. See how it's a little bit overlapping here? You can just take scissors to it and that'll be fine. Or you can make sure that you move it over further because I do find it does tend to want to move on you, which is kind of odd. But this gives you options of what you want to put in there. So if you want two large pockets, go for it because you still have a little piece left over from the other one. So you can easily do that. Or you could just, you know, not have any pockets. If you don't want any, that's okay too. Or if you want a different color, you can make it out of uh, craft foam and then attach it in this manner. If you did not want to do paper. I don't have a Cricut machine. I don't have a laminator. So I was trying to figure out a way that I could make it so that it's not, um, you know, that I don't have to go out and buy more Ooh, tools. I don't know where that one landed. <laughs> we'll leave that one. So the idea was to not have more tools in my studio and just to use inexpensive items where you can make something practical so that is the idea again you can trim this you know but that is the idea so again you feed your elastic through you put your booklets in you know you have a pocket here for something you have a pocket in the front again you could glue around the edges if you wanted to and then do this and then, you know, you can put another elastic in there. So, and there's so many different placemats out there these days that you can make it easily. You know, I've seen some with coffee. So if you really enjoy coffee, you can do that. You can do animals. You can do little kids ones. I don't know. There's so many of them out there. So it'll be fun to try different ones. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.